Hi, and welcome to our tutorial regarding our new release of our Android software uh, version 2.0 for versions of Android 2.3 and greater. Today's demonstration is going to run on a virtual machine running Android 4.0. And as you can see, here's the main screen that will launch with our app. The login credentials should be able to be obtained from your system administrator. And to run this program, you will need uh, bridge communications, connector server that would connect to whatever type of phone system that you're using, whether it be a, a Cisco call manager in this particular example. So we're going to go ahead and just log in. And when we do that, we're brought to the main screen, very similar to what our Windows uh, user interface looks like. Um, our heads-up display panel is still located in the top left-hand corner. Uh, the information about the calls for this particular user are located here. And you can toggle between calls, very similar uh, to how you can do it in Windows to select a call to perform an operation on. You can quick dial here. And you can also use some of these buttons to do various kinds of transfers uh, if you're not comfortable with the tap and hold method that I'll show you here in just a moment. Uh, the call control buttons are all located here. Uh, they are answer, hold, resume, hang up, uh, a general park. Over here are some of the address books with my address book and the Active Directory address book. And this button here is just kind of a help button to kind of show you what all these buttons mean. And we can toggle back out of that. Uh, the parking lot and some of the other things are hidden with the sliding drawer. Just tap on it to open, and we'll be able to see the parking lot and jump to any of the other screens as well. And again, a simple tap will close that as well. Or if we open one of the other screens, it'll close for us automatically. So call handling is done uh, in a very similar way. So let's uh, generate a couple of calls so we can kind of show the functionality here. This is going to be very real time. As you can hear the phone ringing, um, we're able to answer this call. Uh, display that in, in real time. If we are to get a second call to our phone, you'll see that show up here, and we can just simply select it and click Answer, which will place the first call on hold, very much like the Windows version. At which point, if we want to transfer some of these calls, as I mentioned, there's a couple of different methods. One, you can simply select that user, if you'd like, and click the Transfer button. That'll move a call quickly to that user, and we'll see it ring, and we'll see it connect when they connect. Another method for transferring a call, uh, like I mentioned, is the tap and hold. So if I tap and hold on Douglas Johnson here, I'll get this pop-up menu, very similar to our right-click in our Windows environment where you have all of the options in one place. So in this particular example, what we'll be able to do is you know, select the transfer call, supervise transfer voicemail, park the call for this individual, which if you have the messaging piece enabled, will also push out a message to that person's phone, just like it does in the other environments. Um, we're, if we're not on a call, we're able to you know, call this extension, chat with them, uh, send a message to their phone, those types of things as well. So uh, let's just go ahead and transfer this call so we can see that all work the same way. And there you have it. Pretty simple. As I mentioned, the address books are here. Um, they can be manipulated quite quickly. Um, Cross-category searching is available just like it is in all of the other uh, Windows functions. Um, again, the tap and hold here will let you provide any one of these tasks as well, um, calling a number, transferring calls to them, etc. If you're on a cellular device, you also have the option to call that number uh, using it rather than your desktop phone. <clears throat> and I'll pop back out of here. Uh, some of the other screens, I mentioned the park screen, so let's go ahead and we'll park a call and we'll just retrieve that call and show you how simple it is to do that. So, okay, I actually answered that call with the phone. Um, if we want to park a call for someone, say we'll park it for, oh, let's pick uh, Derek Reiser here. So we'll park a call for him. So that call has gone away and into the parking lot. If I pull up the parking lot, I'm able to see all that information, just like I can on the window side. And if I click it, it gives me the option to unpark that call and returns me right back to it. So nice, easy interface to get around in and do things. Um, searching for names is also available here. Uh, it's the same method. You just search for someone, you'll see them instantly. Uh, narrows that down really, really quick. Uh, going back out, it'll do the same thing. Some of the other screens of note, uh, location objects are stored here. I want to be able to transfer a call to a particular location object easily. 
call history, chat, those types of things are also stored here. Uh, just a quick look at the call history, and I'll see, you know, here's my last 100 calls, what happened with them, et cetera. <coughs> uh, we also have group messaging and paging, if that is a purchase option on your server. Um, we have the ability to create and modify extension groups by picking and adding members to whatever group we like. We also have, I should mention the extension groups, instead of a, a large list clickable, they're in a kind of a pull-up box this time. So if we want to look at the sales group, for example, we can do that and just look at those folks. <coughs> um, we can view conference room information as well, or forward a phone. So again, it gives you the ability to forward a person's phone for a particular amount of time as well, just like the Windows version can. <clears throat> and lastly, um, let's just look at the chat function if we would here. Whoops, so it's too far. All right, so let's open up the chat function so we can see what that looks like. Uh, if I want to chat with a particular user, uh, I'm able to do that as well. So pretty much all the same functions available in Windows in a very real-time, fluid Android environment, which is nice if you have you know, wireless phones and you want to be able to you know, not be tethered to a desk and still perform the operation of a receptionist, you're able to do that. Or for someone who may be running a Cisco CS or something else on their desk, they're able to have real-time BLF information as well as call control. Um, that'll conclude today's demo. Thank you very much.